and I'm joined by Scott Stell Scorpions and manager Jay Bell. Now, Jay, I was reading that you do have family in Tampa and in Phoenix and your job, Tampa Yankees, and now here in Scottsdale. How perfectly does this line up for you? Yeah, this, this year really was a, a, a blessing. I, I just had a great time, uh, had an opportunity to, uh, to sign on with the Yankees and uh, get signed to manage the Yankee team in Tampa. My mom lives in Tampa. My sister-in-laws uh, both live in Tampa. Uh, one, uh, uh, one lives about five miles from the ballpark, and the other one lives out near my mom. Uh, but my brother-in-law works uh, in uh, at uh, at SOCOM there at, at uh, McDill. Yeah. And so I got to see family all summer long. My youngest son Brock uh, goes to school down in Bradenton, so I got to see a lot of his games. And and uh, of course, then whenever Brantley ended up in in uh, uh, in the Florida State League this year, we got to compete against one another. So it was kind of a, it was really a neat uh, a neat year for me. And then whenever I got the job here uh, with the Scorpions, it, that turned out really really well too. Uh, not only did I get a job, and I live here in town uh, in uh, in Phoenix, but uh, um, but Brantley ended up getting the getting the opportunity to play for me also. So I got to have the opportunity to manage him uh, over the over the fall. So. You know, it really has been a, an extraordinary year. It's been been something that uh, um, this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, not only manage, but uh, manage the fall league. This has been a blast for me, and uh, I've just I've, I've had a terrific uh, 2017. You really have bucket lists <laughs> all around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways. So you've coached in the big leagues. Is the ultimate goal to manage in the big leagues one day? Yeah, it is. I've uh, I've wanted to manage in the big leagues since I was about 22, and didn't think that I would. Uh, be uh, in the in the uh, big leagues as a player very long, and uh, fortunately I had a nice uh, nice career and got to play a long time. And uh, the uh, the opportunity that uh, that I've had, the opportunities that I've had to uh, to coach and to manage at uh, both the, the uh, uh, player development level and in the big leagues has been really a lot of fun. I've I've learned from both uh, both levels uh, to have been able to. Uh, um, to play for so many really good managers over the course of my career as a player and to be able to work uh, for the number of major league managers as a, um, as a coach um, has, has been extraordinary also to, to have uh, been able to work under Bob Melvin and also uh, Brian Price and Clint Hurdle uh, has, has been invaluable and so um, you know hopefully one of these days I'll have that opportunity it's, it's uh, something that I've um, that I've wished for for a long time and, and uh, you know and, and uh, one of the things that, uh, that I've tried to, to do is I've tried to be content in all uh, situations I've been in but uh, still have, have desires uh, of going to that major league level and to manage there and to impact in an organization from, uh, from that level down. Now when you say and um, playing for all these different managers and when they hope, hopefully be a manager in the big leagues, how much of what from each coach and manager have you taken and now you use that every day with these guys? I think I've learned a lot from a lot of the managers that I've, that I've played for or, or worked under and uh, uh, probably no more than Jim Leland. Jim Leland was probably the guy that uh, that I try and, and uh, uh, exemplify most. Um, but I also played for some guys like Art Howe, who uh, his personality was just wonderful. Uh, he, he knew how to uh, communicate with uh, um, with players, and, and uh, um, but whenever I see a guy like Buck Showalter, who I played for, and as meticulous as he was uh, over uh, just the smallest of details, along with um, Bob Melvin, was the same type of guy. He really expected uh, um, excellence whenever it came to putting together a schedule and and follow along the schedule. So you know, these guys have I've kind of you know, hopefully I've taken a little bit from each of them and, and uh, applied them to my style. Uh, you know, my style as a, uh, as a manager is as much, uh, is very much a, a servant leader type of, type of uh, approach. Um, and, uh, you know, because it is about the players and I want to make sure that, uh, um, you know, that is, my, that is my main objective whenever I walk into the, to the clubhouse daily is to take care of them and to put them in the right situation to have success. Um, but I also want to, you know, I, you know, along with that servant, servant leadership, you know, I want to love on them. And that's the beauty of uh, being in the position right now that I'm in, is I have kids that are, the, the, that are uh, 
Um, you know, I go from 26 down to 19, almost 20 now, and, and so I'm, I'm, uh, they're relevant in my life, and so that's kind of that's kind of fun and unique. But uh, at the same time, you know, I hold them to a high standard. I expect them to represent their organization well, and it doesn't matter whether you're managing uh, the Yankee players by themselves or. In this situation right now, I have five organizations I'm, I'm managing, and uh, you know I don't know what their their rules are uh, organizationally, but you know to hold them to a standard that uh, says, hey, this is what your organization expects you to be like, and uh, I need you to hold yourselves accountable. And, and uh, you know accountability is a big thing, and it's a good thing. And uh, uh, the guys that I've managed here in Scottsdale uh, this uh, this fall have been extraordinary, and uh, the organization should be proud of. Uh, I think we're down to about 37 guys, and I think that they, they should be proud of every one of those guys that they've, they've sent to uh, to me to manage. One of those guys that they did sign is your son, <clears throat> yeah. Brantley, with the Reds, and you're talking about holding accountability, but also he's your son, too, so it is a different accountability. Talk about that relationship and how exciting it is now to be able to coach, manage him. Yeah, matter of fact, I had this conversation with one of my players today, and, and uh, um, you know, whenever I talk to Troy Montgomery about about uh, my expectations for him or, uh, or a, uh, Kevin Kazmarski, you know, those guys, I expect, I, I, I hold them to the same standard that I do Brantley. And uh, I can talk to Brantley a little bit different because he is my son, but I'm going to love those guys just as much as I do Brantley whenever, he, whenever they're out on that field. And, and, uh, and in my opinion, that's, that's, that's just how you're supposed to lead. And uh, I think that whenever they see that you care enough about them, I think that they're, um, their desires as players is to, to uh, strive to uh, to please the guy that's leading, and uh, but you have to you have to earn their respect, and uh, part of that respect is treating them like grown men, and, and uh, I'm not going to treat them as children. They're not they're not children. They are um, um, they have earned the title, but it's a title that continues to be earned, and so whenever. Um, whenever they fail to uh, to measure up to that title of man, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold them accountable to it. And so, um, but at the same time, it's it's uh, um, it is a little bit different with Brandon. You know, it's it's uh, you know as much as I love all my players, you know, he's, he gets a he gets a little bit extra dose of it. Yeah, <laughs> extra hard on him. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk. I. Correct me if I'm wrong, and if this is true. So, in the minor leagues, you were in a trade package for Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin. Mm -hmm. But then, when you made it to the big leagues, your first at bat, first home run, was off of Burt. It was. It, so that's true. It is. And have you had a chance to talk to him about that? I have, as a matter of fact. Okay. I've talked to him several times over the years, and, and uh, the next day especially. But uh, 1985, I was playing in in, um, in uh, shoot Visalia, California. And uh, with the Twins, and, and uh, uh, at the trading deadline, um, the uh, Indians and Twins made a uh, made a deal. Brought uh, it was a four for one package. It was uh, uh, Jim uh, Jim Weaver, Kurt Wardle, and Richie Yett and myself for um, for Bert. And uh, Bert went to to Minneapolis, and uh, I went to Double A, and those other guys I think they went to Triple A, and. Uh, and so I finished up the year in, in uh, 1985 uh, in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, the next year, I started out the year and spent the entire year in Waterbury. And then I went to instructional ball and was there half the, um, half the time. And, and uh, at near the end of September, uh, we had a couple of injuries at the major league level uh, with uh, Julio Franco and Tony Bernazard. So they needed a middle infielder. And I had been uh, I'd, I'd been uh, working out of second base, and and so they uh, called me up from instructional ball, and so I went up to uh, I drove from Sarasota to uh, to uh, um, Tampa for a flight to Minneapolis uh, with uh, with uh, Mike Hargrove, who was my manager in instructional ball at the time, and uh, Grover had played with Bert the year before, and I knew that we were gonna, I was going to face him that night, and. Uh, and so Grover gave me some some advice and told me he said, "Listen, you can't hit his curveball, so make sure that you get on his fastball." He yeah. said, "More than likely, he's going to challenge you, and uh, be ready to hit." So uh, get to Minneapolis, uh, have uh, um, have uh, lunch with the coaching staff, go out early, do a crash course at second base, 
and of course they put all hitters in nine holes, so that's where I'm hitting that night. And, and uh, um, after two and two thirds of perfect uh, uh, baseball, I come up with uh, two outs in the, in the third, and sure enough, Bert throws me a first pitch fastball, and and I make contact and hit out of the park for a home run. And so as I round the bases, it's uh, kind of surreal. Uh, my next bat uh, comes up, and I expect him. He's probably going to throw uh, a breaking ball to me again, and or you know, because I hit the fastball, and and he threw me three straight fastballs, struck me out looking. And uh, the next at bat, uh, he threw me about 11 pitches, and he finally struck me out on a 3-2 changeup. So I was uh, a legitimate power hitter. I had home run and two strikeouts, and and uh, it was a uh, um, it was a, uh, a most wonderful day. All came full circle again for you there, just like both jobs here. Um, okay, lastly, so it's an exciting year around the Diamondbacks, uh, but how special was 2001 for you? And you're a part of an iconic photo, the most iconic <laughs> photo in franchise history. Right. What's that like? Yeah, the, the um, um, this year was part of really special for me to watch the Diamondbacks. Uh, you know, I, I, I am forever tied to that organization. You know, I. I Played for them for five years. Uh, got to uh, coach with them for uh, three years. In the time that I uh, was off of baseball for five years, I was still still around the organization and and uh, did stuff for them on occasion. And uh, so that organization has been a huge part of my baseball career. And so I'm a huge fan of the organization and, and the people that that run it. And and uh, a lot of the players I, I coached in the minor leagues. And so. Um, so I am, I am, uh, uh, I am thrilled at the success that they had this year. And uh, you know, as I go back and I remember 2001, it was a, it was a special time. Um, it was a special time in in, uh, in my career. Also, having the opportunity to uh, uh, to play in a World Series uh, against uh, against the best uh, organization in, in baseball, uh, history-wise, and at that particular moment. In, in history, also because they had, they had had uh, a series of uh, of uh, World Series wins, and they were the team to beat in the in the nineties and uh, in the early two thousands. So, um, you know, for for us to have had the opportunity to to uh, to play against the Yankees in the World Series in the first place, to look across the field and have mutual admiration one side of the field to the other was a great thrill, and, and uh, um, you know, it's exciting to see them start having the success that they're having once again and, and uh, the Yankees are are doing the same thing so I'm I'm anticipating another another matchup here in the, in the near future awesome thank you so much my, my pleasure thank you so much for Jay Bell I'm Sandy Charles with Baseball Census